The European Department of Cinematic Archiving, according to the availability make of all uh, European culture heritage of 2018, hereby proudly available make or present, yeah, if you will, the partly restored uh, masterpiece Dr. Klaus Grecken's Furste eller Syndens Frukt, yeah, English title, Slora. Is the Doctor Evil, uh, classified under category B52Z, non-pornographic Swedish horror from 1972. Uh, I, the archivist, uh, who has been uh, giving this very exciting uh, thrill to um, available make, giving you the historical background to better um, see uh, through the cultural difference, perhaps, and enjoyed it as art. I'm Rutger Hoch. Here we see it's the comic duo of the time, Wilmer and Röv, who did their famous Breaking All the Dishes gag. A skit they performed in 38 movies until audience at the time were said to be only mildly amused, which was of course a positive thing. The government warned that too much joy per every citizen could have disastrous effects uh, and want to keep it at a, a given limit. And the film industry of Sweden played a vital role in maintaining this. The reason Röver is speaking so loudly is apparently he came from street theater and many of these actors, of course, they were not aware of what a microphone was or how it worked. And it gave much joy to the set, I've heard, uh, not less because he was slightly not, not all developed. Oh, the racing the whole wall there which could actually qualify to a b52 set six which mean a almost a movie but that would mean some paperwork for me now oh racing the finger here is of course stealer of every show a la tiders carlson or as he tried out in his international career uh, good time charlie uh, you can have a very interesting technique of acting. You can tell a little in trade of the work I've heard when interviewing actors. is sometimes have a happy face showing uh, that it is a happy character, while other times they might try out an angry face for an angry character. But, but never good time Charlie. He tried all the faces at once. I want a lot of fun, he, he would answer any director objecting to this. And some say that these many characters thriving in his head at the same time would take over his soul. Other claim that he was, he was not very good. And uh, opposite uh, of him is, as was required in the law at the time, a handsome protagonist. It is Eric Steve, who was a well-known pornographic actor at the time. He had a variety of pornography. I read an interview him, uh, with him in the film story and reclaimed he was proud of the variety of pornography he had done. Uh, he did not mention this film. I um, can tell you about this scene. You might have heard about foreshadowing, where they, um, they give a hint of what will come. This scene was called as... Um, we, we, re we registered it as no shadowing. There is no point, but a lot of dialogue. There was, of course, debates in the parliament around this time about making faster scenes with a point, but many of the in the movie industry did not agree at all. And it was not uncommon to use people from the pornographic industry or um, the Nobel Committee uh, just to show that uh, they were famous, um, could arouse some interest, and also that they, they cared, including policy of the time. Oh, he is in trouble now. Here are the both conductors. And of course, he, he never showed them a ticket. And he was also quite rude, raising his finger like this. This is actually the um, adequate way they treated people back then. If you had not the proper ticket or raise your finger to a conductor, they would put you off, no matter where you were heading, which led to uh, many people dying in the snow or simply getting off at the wrong station, which was, of course, also a problem. But he believes that he has given, perhaps, um, mm, it is highly criticized to uh, um, try Bella Lugosi's trade market. Huh? Was that the first time anyone ever did that? That would be of historical significance. He does not talk into the camera. He does speak into the camera. And this is, of course, uh, still legal until the act of 1982. 
Express 17, this train could be the biggest star of this movie. Uh, ten sequels, just about train. Yes, here you go. You better buy a ticket next time, they say, or the train industry will be in severe dangers. Oh, here we are in a um, forest. I will not have to do the paperwork to classify this as an A movie because this was very, very cheap. Uh, he crawling in, probably he fell out side where he was meant to outside the picture where it is of course very hard for viewers to see him and it happens at uh, these occasions the director will shout he will shout climb into the picture good time charlie so that we can see you better here comes the song about death death is here to stay Musics. It's a very scary time. This is, of course, a clever way to um, make it absolutely clear that it is a horror movie. The audience were very, very slow uh, in those days, and they were also uh, busy with other things in the saloon. They were smoking, making children. This is the only female character in this movie that just dropped down on the floor. These animals, of course, show us the Swedish love of nature and folklore and how it wasn't a big deal that everything looked bad. Audience were meant to be very forgiven, forgiving. Movies could be on in the background, going on for six hours, according to the going on mentality. They had, they were not meant to be looked at specifically, and it's very good. Uh, if a lady at this time has a big bosom, all throughout, all throughout the 70s, all throughout the 70s. That is the code for comedy, and you know we have a good time. It was something people laughed at. Right, loud, loud. Come here to our house, and we shall meet perhaps many monsters, perhaps uh, promising more than. Ah. Yes, yes, you have to show everything within the song. That was also stated very clear. It's an early attempt of a music video. Now it also is the character that we will meet. Because sometimes they did not want to come in. They could not be bothered. Uh, was a very normal problem in the 1970s. Of course, now I think he is the young character. Now he is Eric Steve's character named Bernard. And now he is writing the story that we are about to watch. You can see Dr. Claude. He is the script to the movie. It would be very interesting for me as a film historian to actually get my hand out. I will have to download. Oh, help a child without a parent. They don't have one word for it in Sweden, such as. The English orphaned. Oh, my, that child looks exactly as Good Time Charlie. And is he now biting Good Time Charlie? Which Charlie, of course, responds to it. His character in this movie is called The Baron. And he's also a director of a theater, they say, at, at some point. And none of this has any importance. I, I might have made a, a mistake when categorizing this as non-pornographic. He is squeezing them in white. Now, we lived in a, as I keep on translating the song, we lived in a house together. Oh my, did they burn that bird? Oh. And he's riding on a, a horse called Harald. I lived with Death, Death, a person in this movie, uh, in a hotel, a shabby hotel. And um, we often ate potato, you know, throwing the potato around. And we often played music, Death and Me, and Terror. But oh my, the animals are not dead, as seen previously. They're back again. It's very relieving. The terror, the, um, the, the horror, the horror should be translation straight. It grips our world. Everyone will be scared now. Go Harald, the horse, who is also a captain of a lower status. And uh, no, that is good time, Charlie. They had to write this into the movie because he was often drunk on set which only added his popularity at the time. Welcome to the castle of Luxier! This castle which is never seen in the movie. Is that a communist? This could, of course, it's uh, easier to do than a werewolf or other mythological creature in Sweden's forest. It could also just have been a communist who was at the set that day and according to the employment policy of time then would have to be given a job. Many People with grave drug problems turned off around the dramatic theater example and were given roads immediately. This could be one of the very interesting, very failed attempts of German expressionism. 
It could Hello? also be that. This is one of the dilemma we have as archivists. Oh my, the policeman. This is, of course, Handfast Hubert playing always a officer of the police or the military. He refused to ever do anything else uh, because he wanted to be a very handsome man. Proud, but he could never grow a moustache, which, which is why his career suffered, suffered greatly. It's not a real moustache. He's now asking young Bernard if he is a black man, which could be either problematic or very, very interesting. So that's another thing a film historian would have to decide. We are riding, I'm taking you up. I'm picking people up. At, is there someone in that bag? I hope not, a child. I'm taking you to the doctor, whom I do not appreciate at all. Yes, it smells very bad. It's, it's the countryside. Uh, mm. So, is the police also evil? Uh, begs a question. Could easily have called this, is the doctor evil and also is the police officer evil? Uh, we would have no problem. No. Oh, they going up to the very same door as we had been present before. It's very good. That song was clearly foreshadowing. As we appreciate. No one might open a door and then the movie will have to end. There were no requirements for anyone to open a door, so many m movies at this time ended abruptly causing some minor disappointment, maybe sometimes relief. Here, the door was opened, and they keep on walking in. This is an utterly failed attempt of German Expressionism. And my predecessor at this work had to quit this job when viewing failed attempts at German Expressionism. It caused him to try to take his own life. Uh, we hope he will come back. It does not look optimistic. So it, it takes a toll of a man to see failed attempts of German expressions. Uh, I find resistant, the doctor in his turn, played by Alva Grosund, who would only play doctor, uh, he played Dr. Claus in nine following um, sequels. But apparently, according to fans, they went downhill after this one. That is, that, that says something, I believe. Um, he is now strolling, merrily strolling. He was also doctor in a morning television show nah. for children when television arrived to Sweden in 1975, which I will not... I, whose baby was that? Not see, because it is not my responsibility as a film historian to watch TV. Of course, they both have drinks. That's you never drink. Your enemy's drink is an old saying. Could Suppose they have alcoholic tendencies. Only the government is still today allowed to sell alcohol in Sweden, and people uh, were industrious in mixing together things for the alcoholic ruse. And lifts up paper there, always suggestive, makes us wonder what was written on those papers. It's uh, now creating a very interesting mood here. Look at the, the, the setup of this. There's three characters, three wills, three. People who all want something with their own dreams. Something is on fire here. And the doctor is absolutely furious about it. Uh, it be very interesting to see what that is. Very much the uh, window. And ah. Yes, you can see he is at his wit's end. If I would give a little insight in dramaturgic rules. This is what they teach you at film school. Uh, the character, for a while in the movie, they often feel down. And they're about to give up their mission. But then they change their mind again and, and decide that they want to do it. That would save you five years in film school, I believe. And uh, a lot of money you have to borrow from the government to come to that conclusion. Sorry, I didn't mean to cause any trouble for the film educating industry. But so the doctor, he has been trying to discover... Um, in it, it is barely a hospital. It was asked at this time from the left wing, what do they work? We want to see people doing an honest work in our movies, not just strolling around. And I, I could agree with some parts in this criticism, because what, what is his job? In this, is this a hospital? 
but he claims that he has been given a mission to discover what fear is. Is fear a drink, for example? Can you drink fear? That would be very interesting. And of course, there are some of the things they did. Uh, when, and when I, I believe this is supposed to take part in the 1920s, but they never changed their beards for such a thing. The beards, a good moustache will win you a prize for best actor, was said. True, still today. Uh, Alvar Grossund never did because his beard, you can see his beard is actually his own, it was unevenly matched for his small body. They said he is not a man with a beard, he is a magnificent beard with only an unimpressive man hanging out of it. In intestines, the intestines of a, of a beard he was called. And now he's doing his famous stacking on act. Many um, actors of course they absolutely love having monologues because um, you have to learn text and uh, no one uh, is, pays very much attention to it and it, it, it um, they never read it very clearly either. Um, it, it's all just words. So how do you make it interesting? And Alvar Grossund, if you ask him, he would say, I pack things. I always pack things on other actors, creating an interesting subtext, an excitement. Like, will they drop these things, for example? That would be hilarious. I sometimes throw them around, he would say. So there are some different um, tips, uh, meta acting, uh, method acting, all that, all that you can learn. It's a very vibrant period of acting in Sweden in the 1970s. Now I'm gonna put them back. I want something to drink. I bet he is an alcoholic. That is how it is. Now I want you. He doesn't remember having hired Bernard. But he asked Bernard if he can buy him something to drink. Oh dear. This was not unusual uh, employment procedure in the 1970s. Oh, the fishermen. God bless them. These were real fishermen. They were national treasure of Sweden. They were. Sadly, they stole uh, equipment from this movie as they left that day. So one of the reasons why they stopped including working class people after 1990. Huh? Ah, bit of a gag there, the doctor thought, um, probably because of drunkenness, that he was talking to Bernard when it was in fact an old lady. I believe that is actually Anfaste Hubert, as we saw earlier, as the police officer dressed up as a lady. That was considered very funny at the time. Uh, begging questions such as how would that even work today we know today we know and it's oh here we are him Sjöman Eriksson he was in you saw the man in the blonde uh, the blonde hair and um, glasses he was in over 400 moves only a few seconds in each always being beaten very popular very popular due to um, uh, at this point, he was in, it, was, it was to show people this is a movie. We have seen him before in a movie, and this great movie. The, the doctor is fighting a woman in the background. So this is very similar to the first scene that we saw, except he's now actually shadowing. Huh, back shadowing. Full shadow walking by there. Uh, the Baron of Theatre, which is played by Good Time Charlie, is now almost, almost giving him a mission saying that he will stay, stay there and help the doctor. So now Bernard is having his uh, dramatical um, exposure when he's about to stop something. And he doesn't. Because someone helps him. Someone helps the hero. Uh, unless the Baron is also evil. So the begs me. Spoiler alert, as the youngsters say this day. I cannot guarantee we did the odor. Either the doctor is evil, because we are missing parts of the ending, but I'm strongly suspicious. Oh, the fishermen are having a good laugh that he hit that lady, which was played by Hanfaste Hubert, which would make it more, more interesting. Well, you, I, I imagine this whole scene was written in because Charlie could not stop drinking. They had to play around this, give him a bottle in his hand. Well, the doctor is in good spirits. It's lovely to see this two together. Lovely to see Alva Grossund and Erik Stief. The chemistry they had. He's now drinking his... What is with his teeth? Ah, this is... This is where we start. An actual threat. A lead. 
Keep your eyes on this. There is something about his teeth. Perhaps the doctor has now poisoned him. It could, of course, also be the Baron who poisoned him. So, is everyone evil would also be an, an adequate title. It's not at all what the Swedish people call this movie. But then they had very little respect of what English movies were called at the time. Um, for example, the Godfather movies were just called um, something in the mouth, if you translate it word by word in Swedish title. So, disregard for the translation of titles on both sides. Oh, here it comes! This is cultural heritage at its best. You might remember the, the idea from uh, Frankenstein meets Wolfman. The film takes a break because the story is not very important and we all have a jolly good song number. This one is about death. Death is a recurring theme in this movie. Death and lack of pornography. They're singing, we have a curse by an evil old witch which is causing our, us to die, but we're happy anyway. Amazing, yeah. almost, almost matching suits. Of different quality. For me, I do manage them on their own. Many, many singers at this time was married to seamstresses who had to sew their clothes. Uh, while you farmers, you are just dying slowly, toiling away class hatred and you. And they are, they are merrily, so keeping, keeping the chin up. I would say is the message in this movie, and it's something we can still learn from today. Don't take it to oh, the bishop has a saying, and uh, the traditional obligatory fighting is going because they don't enjoy the music. Oh, Ericsson gets the last word of the communist there, and the doctor has had it with that guy. Yes, yes, you better tip him. Oh, there is this a actual black character? Otherwise, we have a trouble. Is that a Jewish character? Let's go. I want to have one uh, female in this movie. Be careful. Oh, the communists always making a fool of yourself. They are not much good in a bar fight. It's a bit, bit terrible. Bit, uh, oh, <laughs> you, the fishman, also right here, thinking about regretting perhaps the previous sexist behavior when laughing as the doctor hit the lady. I, I have to confess, I giggle a little. It is shock, shock. But um, uh, with time, one learn afterwards, of course, when problematic since that is problematic. Uh, but in the heat of sexism, it could be hard to resist. The doctor fell down behind the couch while Bernard, uh, Eric Steve's character, sits, takes off his hat to show that you are home. Hat was worn outside but never inside. So it's an historical detail there that I think they managed to capture rather well. So he has gained a friend at this point. But his mission, the driving force of the movie, is not clear. And the paper he has there. Uh, was the papers that I think the Baron in the train earlier said that these are not good. Could have been a story he has written or some dirty pictures we never get to see. But he is putting, he is just throwing them into the fire. And this is a very low point, the lowest point. Accelerate Not of the movie, but for his character, obviously. And with the fire. No. Oh, here's the train, here's the train. Let me do that. Well, the conductors are uh, in their own dramatical um, low here because they cannot get hold of... Well, it's, it's really high tension now, actually, very exciting. They can't get hold of uh, Luke Ferran, the man who is said to be driving a train. There could be many reasons for this. Sometimes these men, they dislike conductors as a principle. But no, I think it is something more foul play. And he asked him, do you know about this train and where we go, about this evil um, neighborhood? They shouldn't have put the train, nor than the rail, the railway below it, in this place. Because Laxer, which they call it's not a Swedish name, they are hoping there perhaps for the Dutch and German market. 
uh, who just takes everything and, and we're not very careful about it correctly. You can see that in Van Veteren movies, for example. Oh, is there someone in the train? I wouldn't know, says I was, uh, I was shocked and confused. Someone shook their finger at me. Why? It is the, the police officer. The police officer is called Kaufmann. Now, this is very exciting. How did he get on board that train? So this is a bit of a plot twist for the conductors, whom we have not followed very much in the movie previously. But you can see uh, the chief conductor, he is very suspicious. He realized something is, is wrong immediately. Do you have some orange juice? Asks the police officer. We won't, we won't give you some, oh, no, no, sorry, I went ahead. Sometimes I assume what will be said. It is this evil uh, village, asks the conductor. Uh, I, I still want my orange juice. So I, I, I assume it is not this badly written, but that uh, Handfaste Hubert simply didn't read the script. Uh, religiously, but thought, I, I can do this. I am one with my character, I will think of brilliant lines on my own. Often try this, often try this. But he could not grow a moustache. Now, Dreb is attacking, oh dear, oh dear. As a fight scene, this leaves me hungry. Uh, betrayed, failed. Of course, there is no one to write uh, to sending in my complaint since the people involved are long since dead and many of them stayed anonymous. He is not walking out in the dark. We do not recommend that for filmmakers. It gravely confuses many people in the audience because they do not know what is out there. But we do know that Officer Kaufman of the police gave a letter to the conductors. Oh dear, what is this? Very surreal, but it cannot be a dream. What are you saying, fisherman? You don't believe in young, you do not believe he will be a doctor. Thank you, fisherman. Well, a dream would have been um, presented with a circle, a circle going round, round, round. round. Uh, that was, was practice, otherwise they're, they're breaking the law. This is how you... Oh my! So this could be an early drug scene. Oh, no, there. It, he woke up. It was a dream. I refuse to accept that. And I will categorize that as a memory from childhood. I mean, he looked exactly the same. Or, or, this is plausible, he was looking into the future. It cannot be a dream without a twirling circle until 1987. Yet I received a letter, uh, which looked very much like one of the paper he threw on the floor earlier. It is said that all paper looked the same in 1972 due to the paper strike. So, uh, was this paper delivered by the train? Asked. Yes, it was. The conductors gave me a paper. Now this is very interesting because then the, that, that could um, could lead us to think that the officer Kaufman gave them a paper to deliver to the doctor. But he was just meeting. Wasn't he just meeting the, the doctor early? He could just have given it to him. But maybe he wanted to stay a secret. Yes, that's probably it. There is no coffee in that cup. I'm, I'm confused as to why he put the cup there. There was clearly no coffee inside. Well, in this paper clauses, we have many clues to as, as to why there is, um, we can continue to find out what is fair. Is fair a drink? Can we drink fair? Perhaps. Or should I give up, says the doctor, because I am also at my dramatical low point now, where I either uh, I either find motivation by you, a new friend, or I give up and the movie is, is over, which was not unheard of at this time. Movies could end at the most abruptly. So it was always, there was an excitement. Or sometimes um, the man in charge of the machinery had just lost some rolls of film. 
and people in a small community will be no divisive, no divisive. Ja, vad vill du? Jag står ju här. Ska, ska jag not question jag authority. Uh, I called not for more tea, but for my friend. There is someone outside the window. There is someone outside the window. There is someone outside the window. And now, right, he called for some friends. Oh, Bernard is no longer a boy. He has matured during this story. He is now inviting welcome. One of the doctor's friend. Public health care in the 1920s was not developed as it were. In the 70s, of course, you would actually have cut this man's arms off because they were obscene. Uh, these are all my friends who are also doctors and sick people. This might in fact be hospital. And I apologize for my earlier comments. And uh, yeah, the fat one there is of also um, bleeding. Who did this? Did the doctor, did Dr. Claus do this? That would indicate that he is evil. This was the most hated actor of this time. Gustav Schuntum. Which is why he had to perform in a garbage camp on several occasions. So he is basically coming together with like an old band, you can imagine. An old band coming together for a last gig. We will discover what fear is. Did you poison these people? Did you poison me? No. Do you think I am evil? And uh, so this is what's in the dark. It's more of these trees without leaves. The doctor is now talking to the dark. No, sorry, sorry. This is Officer Kaufman. The moustache. Look at the moustache. It's Officer Kaufman. And he's saying, I'm not sure if the doctor can do our, our evil mission. Or our, our day. I don't, I don't know if for sure if he's evil yet. Uh, I will help him. Mm hmm. Kaufman is coming. Kaufman is coming. Oh no, our enemy. Hide everything. Run away. Run away, said doctor. Go, you know what to do. They do? They must have been briefed before. You, we, shall, we shall begin. Kaufman actually gave them this, this mission. But they don't know that. They think he wants to stop them. Which might be part of the plan. Boys, says Charlie. It's time to, to cut this act. The first act. The first act? How long is this? What should we do? Mr. Williams, which is the name of the other conductor. Should we leave the train? No, because we are conductors. We will stay here and fight and uh, fight for the train. We won't go down the drain. Oh, lovely to see Comedian Rev in a pot here. Ironically, of course, pothead, thinking how he ended his career. Oh, we will, uh, for the train company, we will not let them down. We will have a jolly good time. Oh, yes, that's right. Pumps up. Oh, what is this? The Baron is in Kahoo with the Communist? That was of course not unheard of in the complicated political backstabbing climate of Europe. And uh, he wants to write stories, that's what he is in this for, yeah, create horror stories, the Baron. He also wants the Communists to grow, I believe, watering him, such a man. Uh, life seems utterly pointless, but I shall take this mission uh, seriously, and the doctor barely sings at all, but he looks very seriously. Uh, gets, so it's, it's about taking a, 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 a utterly pointless job seriously. Do your best. This film tried to shout to us in this hopeful days. Kill everyone. Here, which is a less positive note, but still, you know, very Lutheran working world. Oh my, he did it. Han Fasterhubert killed this song. This is a brutal murder, almost sexual crime against this song. After that, this song can no longer continue. So we do, we have not restored the full ending, but it says here that the, the, with the, as years went by, there would be many, many adventures with the doctor and all his friends. But here you can see, he's dancing. Everyone has a friend dancing with. Farmer wants a wife. There is someone for everyone. It's also a theme of this movie. So hold out there. Hold out there. I think it leaves me with a sense of love and positivity for the future that I think we need. Yeah, this is not a communist. This is another friend of of the Baron from the countryside. They say, go and get me some popcorn. And uh, this is waiting for the for the finale, which we have not been able to find. So. I, I can imagine that if there is a universe where movie characters sit, these two are still sitting there to that very, this very